Broadcom. The company's first quarter results hitting the wire and the shares down a quick 1.8% here. Uh, let's run through the numbers here. First quarter adjusted earnings per share beating estimates $10.99. First quarter adjusted net revenue at $11.96 billion. It looks like semiconductor solutions revenue is what the miss is here. That came in at $7.39 billion. Analysts were looking for $7.7 billion. So as far as I can tell, that's what's responsible here. I'm also seeing the company sees its full year revenue at about $50 billion. So that's something we'll be watching as well. Yeah, stock's at about 3.5%. Now, again, like Marvell, Julino, Broadcom, this was just another monster. It was up about 120% over the last 12, 12 months. Uh, some comments here also from CEO Hawk Tan. He's talking about uh, drivers of revenue growth. He calls out VMware. Of course, they closed that big acquisition uh, finally late last year. Also, remember, part of the reason the stock has surged, investors seeing this as an AI play, and Hawk Tan talks about that. They're networking products and AI data centers. Talks about uh, custom AI accelerators from the hyperscalers to the big cloud giants. Again, though, at least initially here, stock down in the after hours. You know, and, and just one more thing I wanted to mention as we talk about Marvell, as we talk about Broadcom, there has been an enormous surge in options activity around all the semiconductor makers. So when you see moves also post earnings, you got to think that options plays are a part of that. Let's talk more about these Broadcom numbers. Let's get to CFRA Research Senior Equity Analyst Angelo Zeno. So, Angelo, I know these numbers just came out, but just give us sort of your first blush take here. Yeah, I mean, listen, overall, it, it came kind of in line with expectations. I mean, slightly ahead of expectations, um, if you really think about it, for the, the January quarter. But as far as kind of the guidance that they provided, um, they, they essentially last quarter, interestingly, kind of moved from a quarterly guidance to an annual guidance. And if you kind of look at what they provided here, for the full fiscal year of 2024. Again, it was pretty much matching what they said uh, three months ago. If you kind of look at, um, you guys pointed out some of the incredible moves that we've seen in some of these kind of semiconductor AI related names and both kind of Broadcom and Marvel kind of running into the numbers this quarter. Um, it's not necessarily a surprise that you kind of um, aren't getting much of a reaction or kind of some downside here um, on the names, uh, you know, given the, the kind of inline expectations out there. And Angelo, you know, interesting, of course, you know, part of the reason this stock has surged the way it did, investors see it as, you know, another smart AI play. And, and you've heard the company, they're obviously um, getting much more bullish about the opportunities they see in AI. Do you share that bullishness, Angelo? No, we do. I mean, and if you kind of look in calendar 2023, there were really two names out there on the semiconductor side of things that really did see some significant revenue on the AI side of things. That was, of course, NVIDIA, and the other name was Broadcom. And so you saw kind of the, the, the reaction or the move in the stock prices last year from those names because you kind of go into 2024 here. Um, that, that the same story that you saw in 23 for Broadcom continues to build here this year in terms of um, really on the networking side of things being driven by two factors. One kind of their, their Ethernet switcher business out there, which is going to essentially nearly double this year. And then you kind of got that custom silicon business Business, which is largely uh, alphabet, if you think about it, and that's probably going to grow at least from a you know a three to four billion dollar type of uh, run rate here this year. So um, there is a lot of growth attached to that AI story for Broadcom. I think the other interesting thing, of course, is what's going on on the software side of things. If you look at the multiple for Broadcom here over the last three four months, you've absolutely seen a re-rating here differently than what you've seen you know from the reasoning from Nvidia's move, which is really all kind of earnings beats. Um, on that side of things. For Broadcom, it's more along the lines of now being a 60-40 split um, in terms of semis um, and software and kind of that visibility that you have over the next couple of years and greater kind of acceleration on the software side of things is kind of, I think, attributing to the, the higher multiple for this name. And Angelo, um, Hocktan has said that um, AI, the general spending in AI, could account for about a quarter of the company's revenue this year. Anything in these results that make you think that that number's too low or too high? I mean, we're not going to have uh, color until they actually uh, have their fall and where they typically break down those numbers. But you kind of look at the guidance that they did provide. Um, again, I would think it's pretty much um, everything's kind of running in line with what he previously uh, commented on a couple of months ago. If you look at the run rate just three months ago, it was uh, AI was running at about 20% of their revenue. It was about 15% of their full fiscal year uh, 2023 revenue. So that 25% number, I think, um, should at the very least uh, match expectations with potential upside to that number. 
And Angela, we'll get you out of here on this. You know, this is Broadcom's um, first quarter, I, I think, with uh, with VMware in tow here. They closed yeah. that acquisition uh, uh, late last year. Angela, what, what is that acquisition going to mean for Broadcom's business going forward? Yeah, I think I think it's a, a great acquisition for them. You know, again, I think it it, it boosts the the margin uh, trajectory of this company. I think a lot of investors are going to want to know um, exactly where the the opex number is going to look like here over the next couple of quarters. Um, I think there was a hope that you know maybe that you know the, the cost cutting was going to be maybe a little bit ahead expectations because Hawk has just been absolutely um, exceptional in prior acquisitions with the cost cutting moves. So we'll see what he has to he has to say on that side of things. But this is all about kind of driving that margin expansion, um, the cost cuts, which we expect will be about a 40% reduction from the end of last year to the end of this year. Um, so there's going to be notable cost cuts. And then, I mean, again, it does accelerate the business in terms of um, the run rate, even kind of exiting the, you know, this calendar year as you go into next year. Um, we do think high single digit, low double digit growth for the software business now um, is what to be expected, where over the last couple of years, it's more, you know, has, it's been more of a low uh, single digit growth driver for this company. All right, stock initially here down the after hours. We'll see what CEO Hock Tan has to say on the call. Angelo, thanks as always for joining us. Appreciate it. Great, thanks for having me.